Good morning, good morning. Look at that, what a lovely morning. Look at that long grass. Look at that mole hill. Oh, moles. The bane of my life. I know how to catch them, I just don't have the time. So, I hope you're well. Oh, that's a big uh, Now, now, what do I do? Which way do I go? I'm early, I'm going to go the slow way. Pick the uh, scenic route. There we go. So, we haven't spoken for a while. I've been to Tunisia Hotel uh, Mahaba Club. Don't go there. <laughs> it's uh, in the middle of being redeveloped. And so they've closed access to the beach, they've closed access to the pool. And uh, just generally, it's just uh, drilling all day. So I'm going to have to have a word with Chewy and ask him for, say, 25% of my money back. So uh, under, you can make a civil claim for a breach of contract if your holiday wasn't, uh, you know, was substantially was not as advertised. And seeing as we weren't really told that the, one of the pools was shut and there'd be no beach access, and that um, they've already admitted that they didn't warn us about anything like the building noise or anything, then then it's got to be worth a punt, you know, we might get two, three hundred quid back. Just about marginally covers the cost of all the aggro involved in writing the letter, etc. and researching it all, making sure we've got the sums correct and the flight numbers and the dates of the holiday and the hotel. So, <clears throat> it's all go at the moment. I mean, we've just come back. The uh, Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, has declared a general election yesterday for July the 4th. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Nobody can understand for a minute why he's, he's declared it for July and not November. Because to be honest with you, they're 20 points behind in the polls. And, um, you know, they've got, they, they could have another seven months to close that gap up. But, uh, or six months, but um, they've chosen not to. They've chosen to go straight to the polls based on how things are at the moment. And then, you know, and everyone's saying, well, that's because things are really, really good at the moment. And But what nobody's saying is that it's almost certainly because Rishi knows that things are going to be worse in the future. So, that's my theory anyway. I think inflation is, uh, they've got a 2% inflation target. It's come down to 2.3, but it didn't come down as much as they were hoping it would. And, um, you know, I still think there's a lot of inflationary pressure in the, uh, in the system. And uh, they, you know, they've sort of got the legislation through to deport the economic migrants to Rwanda, but they haven't actually deported any. And, there might be a lot of protests and riots and you know the protesters have probably set fire to the plane etc etc so he doesn't really want to sit through all that it's that's right so i think honestly he's thinking i mean let's bear in mind this guy is richer than the king okay he's richer than the king why he, he's just wondering why he bothers you know why is he, he comes to the conclusion that he's he's not good enough for the job really basically he's done he doesn't want it that badly. He's sort of oh, I've run out of petrol. He's um, you know, he got to where he got to by I don't know by, by dint of his money and influence, I suppose, and uh, and he's got he's suffering the same problem as uh, Gordon Brown did when Gordon Brown spent all that time waiting to take over from Tony Blair. And when he took over, he was given some credibility, you know, he was given the due respect and everything. But then after a few years, it became quite apparent that he was not any good, you know, not a visionary, not a leader, not anything. <coughs> so he got slung out. 
And I think that's what's happening. I think Sonak realizes that he's gonna uh, he's gonna get slung out. And that's because he's, you know, as people delight in telling you, he was never elected. He stood against Liz Truss. Liz Truss won, he lost, and then uh, she embarked on a series of policies which were designed to uh, lower taxes, shrink government, shrink government spending. Oh my God, did the establishment not like that? So basically they, and, this, and of course, Rishi Sunak, who'd been chancellor up to that point, um, was in a position to not, I wouldn't say engineer a, a crisis in government spending, but to sort of say, look, you know, if you was to go in the media and say that she's the worst prime minister we've ever had, then I wouldn't mind. And of course he benefited then, didn't he? Because he got elected, you know, by, by acclamation afterwards, because he was the only other can candidate. They didn't want to go through another big election. So, so we've got this weird situation where Sunak was the chancellor and caused all the problems, right? And government causes inflation. Remember, we've established that, haven't we? Government causes inflation by expanding the money supply. So you've got uh, giveaways, eat out to help out, the uh, furlough scheme, all sorts of uh, government giveaways, expansion of the money supply. And then at the same time, they're creating a, a supply shock by cutting down, by, by shutting down the whole country. So there's no goods and services being produced. So you've got this, this shortage of goods and service and this now all of a sudden a tremendous glut of money. And everyone's wondering why prices are going up. Now, now of course, I know they're furiously trying to blame Vladimir Putin they're, you know, the, the, what they, the person they want to set up as a bogeyman. I'm not saying he's not a bogeyman, but I'm just saying he's not really responsible for inflation. Oil's still $70 a barrel or something. It's not like $700 a barrel. And, um, and uh, the bloke who really caused the whole problem, the bloke who was completely inept and clueless as a chancellor, then ended up as the prime minister tasked with the job of solving everything, you know, and he was like, he came in as Prime Minister and said, don't worry, now I've been a brilliant Chancellor, now I'm going to be a brilliant PM, I'm going to solve all the problems, well, hoping that the public continued to believe that the problems weren't the, weren't ones that he created, which is in fact is what they were. So, then on the other, uh, his right-hand man, Jeremy Hunt, spent a lot of time at the top of the health service and to be quite honest with you didn't really have much uh, you know I don't think he was really the poster boy of most of the NHS staff I don't think he was up in many staff waiting uh, staff uh, restrooms posters of Jeremy Hunt he spent all this time stuck in that job and they do tend to get stuck in the job of being in charge of the NHS. If you're given that job, you tend to sort of, you don't get reshuffled. You tend to stay in that job for decades. So he's been in this, he was, he was at this, presided over the sort of the gradual deterioration in the health service to the point where the doctors are on strike over money. The uh, waiting lists are shooting through the roof. And the first woman ever born <clears throat> on the NHS, who was born born two minutes after the NHS came in and got the nickname Nye, after Nye Bevan, who invented the NHS, has now gone public and said that she's, uh, she's, she's going private. Things have finally got so bad, it's taken from 1948 to 2024 for her to come to the conclusion that she needs to go private. And what is the thing she's going private on? Dentistry. Dentistry. Her son, who couldn't get in with an NHS dentist, is one of these people who's decided that it'd be a good idea to try and take his own teeth out with pliers. And that's forced her to admit that the NHS is not fit for purpose and that, um, and that she's gonna go outside the NHS, at least for her dentistry. Probably, uh, you know, if she has a heart attack or something, she'll 
she probably won't, but certainly dentistry. So <coughs> then <coughs> the trouble is um, <coughs> the person then that's, that's brought in as chancellor to take over from Rishi Sinak after Liz Trust departs, Sunak steps from Treasury to Prime Minister. He needs someone as a Chancellor. Now, who does he choose? He chooses this gimlet-eyed, marathon-running twerp who has presided over the complete collapse, pretty much, of the National Health Service. And he decides to promote him and put him in charge of the country as a whole. Put him in charge of all the finances. And this, <clears throat> this guy who's uh, <clears throat> an inveterate liar, <coughs> excuse me, who, who came to the country after the last budget and said, I'm going to give you a big tax cut. And sure enough, he did cut one tax, quite a lot, but didn't raise the thresholds on anything else. So as a result, people's overall tax burden went up. And the people are not stupid. I mean, they, they know that. They know their overall tax burden's gone up, and yet they've got this gimlet-eyed twerp saying, saying, I've put your taxes down. So, you know, if ever two people deserved to have a, a break from politics, it's these two. Um, and because they're 20 points behind in the polls, the expectation is that they will have to. Um... <coughs> I'm sorry about this. I don't know whether it's the pollen or. In fact, I haven't really spoken much for. I've been lying on a sunbed for the last week. Yeah, so. I bought Trusty's uh, book, 10 Years to Save the West. And it turns out it's going to be quite a collector's edition because there's only about 2,000 copies of it got sold. And that's because the uh, establishment has combined to rubbish her uh, approach to uh, governance, which can be summed up as smaller government, less government spending, less regulation, and, and, and higher growth as a result, increasing in more prosperity. <clears throat> and of course, everybody who's, you know, in receipt of a government stipend, which is more than half the country at the moment, doesn't want to hear about less government spending. They don't want to hear about a smaller government or anything. So, she's gone off to America, where they're far more receptive to her uh, sound... Uh, Rothbardian and uh, Mises, Ludwig von Mises type Austrian economics than we are in the UK where we are, you know, we are proud, proud, um, <clears throat> proudly responsible for Keynes, who's the guy who said the government should be the purchaser of the last resort of all the goods and services if the country's in a bit of a recession, then the government should step up spend some, uh, print some money and spend it. <coughs> and also said, when the economy is doing well, should uh, step down and um, and destroy some money. But that's the bit they never, uh, they never do, you know. They always forget that last bit. Don't ask me why. But, um, now, I've got a bit of a decision now where to go because I think one of these roads is shut so I'm going to go straight on and then do a sneaky nip. Got the love festival. Ugh. So here we go. This is R&B Lindsay. Look out. Yeah, so... so um, so the person who mucked up the NHS has been brought in <clears throat> to run the economy and of course has, has pretty much mucked it up. Now I'm not saying that his attempts to bring in more tax 
are not necessarily the wrong idea. I think the point is that you can't run the government solely on the tax receipts. The, the public doesn't pay enough tax to pay for the government. Hence the government has to issue bonds which the, uh, the Bank of England buys and authorises the Treasury to uh, put a load of money in circulation that's effectively been created out of nowhere and that's what funds the difference. So you've got tax receipts and uh, on the left by the way is Manston. It's a massive great long runway, it used to be an RAF base and uh, uh, that has been uh, held up. They're trying to develop that as a freight airfield and that's been held up by uh, this local woman called Jenny Dawes <coughs> who's obviously wealthy enough to keep going to the High Court to keep getting appeals and appeals against her appeals being denied and now they finally 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 denied her last appeal and so now it's it's going ahead so that's just delayed everything this big airfield national assets been lying there look at the sides of it to 10 years <clears throat> while well, one person has just decided that she didn't like it and uh, there's a new thing you've heard of NIMBYs, <clears throat> not in my backyard. There's a there's a new category of person called a banana, which is a build absolutely nothing anywhere near anyone. She must I think she's a banana. So yeah, so we've got the guy who caused the problem in charge of solving the problem, and then the guy who's crashed the NHS in charge of the economy. Now my, <clears throat> my overwhelming thought about it all is that although things are not at all conducive to the toys with regards to going to the polls now, I think Sinek has been told and his forecasts show that the longer things go on now, the worse things are going to get. The, the sort of, he's in his sunlit lit uplands at the moment, but the winter is coming. So he's decided to go now on the basis of what he says he's going to do rather than what he can demonstrably prove that he's achieved. Which will be a big test, won't it? A big test of how gullible the public is. Which, to be honest with you, is pretty gullible. So... <clears throat> So I've got had this girl come in about four months ago, 13 years old, the sixes shot to bits, needs, needs to have extraction of all four sixes. So <clears throat> I said to her dad, you know, we, we can do it here. She's 13 years old. She should be capable of tolerating <coughs> uh, the odd six being extracted. It's not really going to be massively difficult. But Dad didn't want to do it because I think we were going to charge 400 quid. Which at £100 a tooth is, is still, you know, cheaper than he'd have to pay if he took the dog down the vets. But uh, some parents, and in particular some ethnic groups, are very particular about the fact that children are children and should get NHS treatment and therefore and shouldn't have to pay. So he very politely informed me that, you know, that wasn't acceptable and therefore he wanted to be referred to the NHS to get it done. So we, we, we sent her in through our referral system and um, didn't think anything more of it. Anyway, about three months later, the bloke uh, rang up and said he hadn't heard anything. And so this, this uh, ref.management or rego referral system that we use, um, as a major deficiency insofar as if someone le uh, leaves a message or updates someone's record or something you're not notified they pretty much expect you it's a, it's a pull it's a pull information service rather than push so you can't which these days is just unforgivable I mean nobody <clears throat> you know I mean how would you feel 
<coughs> and if you listen to say 20 podcasts and every day you had to tune in to <coughs> look up all 20 to see if anyone had, had posted any new content it wouldn't work but these guys they expect you you know to as an nhs practitioner i suppose to be on nhs mail every day and and check on your regos every day and <coughs> but we don't so we went on to Rego and we found out that her, her referral had been rejected on the grounds that we'd only sent bite, bite wings and they need an OPG. So, okay, I mean, two, three months wasted, but we then send her off for an OPG, <coughs> urgent. Two weeks later, get the OPG back, have to do a new referral, send it off with the OPG. In the meantime, um, <coughs> She decided that uh, she doesn't. Uh, well, I think she went along and she thinks she went along and for one for an appointment, and then had a fit when she saw the needle. And so they said that she needed sedation; that she couldn't be treated under local without sedation. So, uh, <clears throat> so anyway, they sent the referral back. Dad's on the phone again. Uh, So then we're, we're referring her for sedation. So then we do, do another referral. Oh, so bear in mind, I've only ever done a checkup on this girl. And she's not really actually like properly a patient of mine. She's just, we're just, when you do a checkup, you get saddled with all the admin for, for whatever, whatever it takes. So we referred her for uh, extraction under sedation. And then the next thing you know, the dad's on the phone again saying that that, that referral has been turned down and when we looked into it it turned out that the people were she'd been referred to we hadn't sent her the, the triage people decide where to send her <coughs> and they said that they don't do um, sedation on anybody under 16 so <clears throat> now I can't when they send this referral back I think what they should do is that they should send, they should forward her on to someone who does do station under 16. It should be an onward referral, but it's not. It's always a backwards referral. They always refer you them back to whoever referred it there. So now she's been referred like three times and had three no's. So I rang up the community dental service. In the meantime, her dad's still on the phone saying, when she's in pain, we have to keep her off of school. When we send her to school, the school says she's in pain and we have to go and collect her. So this girl's in a lot of trouble. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> ring up the community dental service. I've got a patient who needs a sedation. Uh, she's under 60. Do you do that? Oh yeah, we do that. Fine, how do we do that? Oh, I'll just put her in the referral service. Same as you do with all the others. So we got, well, no, we've got a fourth referral to do now. And um, but just before she hung up, she said, oh, I, "I need to let you know that there's a waiting list of about a year for this service. So can you just make sure your patient knows that?" So <clears throat> I'm like, "Great! I can imagine how that's going to go down with her dad." She's going to miss a year off school at this rate. This road on the left, is, or at least it was shut yesterday. This roundabout is supposed to be finished last December. So it's seven months overdue and I think it's probably got another two months in it yet. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so I had to write a letter to the dad yesterday and say, yeah, no, I've Sorry to hear that you've been, uh, your, the, the, your uh, application for sedation has been turned down on the grounds of that she's under 16. However, we've referred you somewhere else. Now, I think personally, her dad has not really helped this at all because she's, she's very much one of these children who's like, oh no, dad, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that. And her dad's saying, all right, all right, sweetie. You know, just, <clears throat> well, Dad will get something sorted out for you when he doesn't know that he can. And in fact, in practice, he can't. 
So, so I've got every sympathy with, with the dad and the girl in particular. It's less so with the parents because they're the ones who wrecked her teeth. <coughs> they managed in the space of seven years to uh, wreck her teeth so badly that they need to come out. And probably they're still feeding her sugar, which is why she's still getting toothache. But uh, I've got a lot of sympathy with the girl because it's not her fault. She's got parents like that, and it's not, you know. And again, I think the father, you know, I don't really again have much sympathy with people who complain about the, how bad the NHS is because they have allowed it to become bad, you know. These are the people who in 1990 were very much on the side of the government <clears throat> against the profession and allowed the government to bring in a load of changes that, uh, <coughs> that, that, more or less wrecked service and it was done with the full support of the public you know the dentists were telling the truth they had the right idea and yet they were repeatedly um, ridiculed and, and overruled <coughs> anyway I've got a new chief dental officer Mr Wong believe it or not used to be the assistant chief dental officer or the chief assistant dental officer or something I don't know never heard of him don't know whether he's ever suggested anything whether he knows anything about dental policy whether he's ever done anything that's I think basically he's just he's just gonna continue in the spirit of Sarah Hurley to do nothing she did nothing for the best part of 10 years, didn't she? After Barry Cockroft left. So the, the recipe, I think, is for continuing paralysis in dentistry, um, as opposed to worse paralysis, five years of absolute paralysis for the country. Because when Labour gets elected, things are going to get seriously barking mad. And uh, so my plan, really, is to get through the next sort of six years or so uh, without, um, you know, with, with minimal damage, with minimal damage. And then uh, and then what will happen is after five years of having a barking mad Labour government, well, they'll, people will probably re-elect the Tories because Sonic will have stepped down by then, won't he? Gone to live on some mega yacht in India. Anyway, so that's my take on politics and dentistry. But you have a good one. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.